stay up and, and below the fourth of July, I'll see you. I'll look back. Love you. Okay, bye bye. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Sunday morning Calvary worship experience. We're glad to have you this morning. Um, a reminder to please um, mute your microphones if you would. We can hear the background noise even when it's in the other room, I think. Um, <clears throat> grateful to be here this morning. Uh, having not participated last week, I could feel it in my state of mind. I miss my church, my worship Sunday morning. Um, it's Independence Day, 4th of July, and uh, a day for reflection on all the freedoms that we have, that we can sit here in our homes and worship. We could sit in our sanctuary and worship safely. Um, grateful for all those that serve our country. <clears throat> One thing I was thinking about, um, you know, as I, I ruminate on what I wanna talk about on Sunday mornings, um, I can kind of tell how my, my state of mind by how I drive. <laughs> so uh, a lot of times um, if I'm not doing well in the car, it's because I'm not doing well up here and, and uh, I'm scattered and, and not connected to God. So I had this Thursday drive home from Baltimore, which should have been four hours and it was six. And um, <clears throat> I was all over the place feeling like, how the heck could this be happening to me? Frustrated, anxious, road rage. And I thought, wow, I need to sit still like that last hymn. I need to be still. And uh, on this Independence Day, I was thinking first about freedom from fear. Um, but then the reality for Kate this morning was to reflect on freedom from ego. Ego, easing God out. So uh, that is what I'll be ruminating on this week. A couple of announcements. It is Communion Sunday this morning, so please have a piece of bread or a cracker ready for when we uh, share uh, break bread later in worship. Also, clean up part two. We wanna shine up those pews and get ready for us to come back to the sanctuary Saturday, July 10th from nine to 12. Uh, so please mark your calendar, plan to join us. Um, I missed the last cleanup, so I will come do Trojan duty on cleanup number two. Um, looking forward to that. Are there any announcements out there before I get started this morning? Does anybody have anything to add? Again, this dysfunctional Christian is glad to be here this morning and um, definitely need to take a deep breath of the Holy Spirit drop my shoulders, be present where my feet are, be still, as he's saying, be still, it's easier to run for me. Please join me in the call to worship. Blessed are those who have not seen. And yet have come to believe. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Our first hymn this morning is holy, holy, holy. Good morning, good morning, good morning, my brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Won't you bow your heads with me as we pray our prayer of confession. Oh Lord, we are often fixed on things that we cannot change. We spend more time looking for other people to do things for us that we want rather than have the faith we say we have to move through our problems. We pray, Lord, that as you release us to our purpose in your kingdom, that you would teach us to hold on to those things that are necessary and let uh, of those things that are burdensome. Help us to know that we can cast our cares on you. Help us to trust not only your word, but believe. Believe in the Father and in your name. Believe that you would not put more on us than we can bear. Believe that all things are possible. Believe that you have delivered us through our baptism. We pray, amen. 
Amen. You know, what has challenged me the most over the last 18 or so months is this notion, this concept of belief, especially for preacher types like myself, how important it is to realize that belief is not a one-time thing, but it is a process that is cultivated over our lifetime experiences. The Bible says that the spirit of God does not dwell with man always, which means that sometimes I will falter in my belief. Some days I believe strongly, Kate. There are other days, as you say, I'm a very dysfunctional Christian because my belief is not always as kind as I think it could be. And this is where, in this part of our service, we talk about a declaration of pardon. God forgives me when I look away from my power source. God forgives me when I fail to remember those places that only God can bring me through. God forgives me even when I cannot forgive myself. Thanks be to God for grace. Thanks be to God for mercy. Thanks be to God for the mustard seed of faith that comes into our lives. This is our pardon. Thanks be to God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Gracious God, since we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth, make us hunger for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, in his name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 13. That's Mark, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 13. Reading from the New International Version, hear now this word of God. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? 
aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the 12 to him. He began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for your journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Wherever, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. May God have the blessing to the reading of his word for the good and edification of our souls. Amen, amen. Good morning, good morning. We're thankful for your presence today on this platform called Zoom. It has been our worshiping platform since uh, the beginning of the pandemic. And we are grateful that God has enabled us an opportunity to give a comforting word in spite of the words and the scenes and the views of life <clears throat> around us. We're so grateful that God, in spite of what we've seen and been through, has stayed present in spite of my doubts and in spite of my fears. <clears throat> my heart is overwhelmed today because I have been more clearly available to seeing God's presence in my life. I don't wanna go to that sermon, but I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me the mind to remember, amen. We're looking at the gospel according to Mark. And we're going to start again at verse number four. And Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there, except lay hands on a few people 
and healed them. He, that is Jesus, Jesus was amazed. Imagine that, Jim. Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the 12 to him. And he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. And these are his instructions. One, take nothing for your journey except a staff. That's nothing but a stick, by the way. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Two, wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, this is his third instruction, stay there until you leave that town. If any place will not welcome you or listen to you, Leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. After those instructions, they went out and preached that people should repent, that is change. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Verse 11, if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. I'd like for you to repeat after me in your own space, I need to shake the dust off my feet. I'm gonna say it again, because I didn't see some people's lips moving. I need to shake the dust off my feet. Amen. Oh, my Lord, I, I can't tell you how many times I've preached from this portion of scripture over this 46 years of this journey. But somehow, during this time in my life, Heather, these basic instructions of Jesus to me today in some way has changed not only my perspective, but my life. It speaks to, I'm glad, glad to see you, Gwen. It speaks to God's purpose for all of us. Sometimes I have mixed God's purpose with what I see as my perspective. And those are two, those are two different things. Because what I view is important and what God has placed on my life as being important, what I view is secondary to what God has purposed for me. That's a hard switch because you know, I'm, you know, I want things my way. I don't know about you. I'd like to have things my way. I, I've got the plans, Heather. You know, I, I, you know, I'll outline what's supposed to happen because, you know, that, that's, that's what we were taught to do, right? Because it, it's really my stuff. But the reality is my life is in God's hands. 
And the sooner I realize that, that, Bobby, the more stress is relieved from my life. Now, Jesus, and you know, we don't we have a hard time saying this, Glenn. Jesus and the scripture says, Jesus was amazed. Now, you know, first of all, you know, we have all of these things about that we describe about Jesus, but for Jesus to be amazed, that's something. That really is something. That in his humanity, Kate, he is amazed at the lack of belief. And realizes from that experience that he needs to expose some realities to people who have started following him called disciples to help them realize that it's not about you. It, it, you know, it's really not about you. You know, when I take up a job, Jim, sometimes I think it's really my total responsibility. You know, as a pastor, you know, you come to realize that, you know, well, you know, I was trained to think this. When you're called to a church, you know, people are going to automatically follow you. No. <laughs> and sometimes the people that you're called to, as Jesus indicates, are the last people to really listen to you. A prophet, a person who's been touched by God to experience the vision of God, is generally not accepted in his own house, in his own town, among his own family. Yes, Bobby. Uh, <laughs> among your own family. Yes, John Clark. Sometimes my family are the persons who least hear what I got to say. I don't have a voice for them. Why? Because their image of me is carved in their own personal experience that is not necessarily of God. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. So Jesus says, to people who were just this ragtag group of people, you know, imagine this, disciples. Some were in a vision, they had no idea of a theological preposition. They come to Jesus because of the aura of his wisdom and they were, whatever he did, it was made clear to them in their illiterate situation of life. Now, I'm not questioning whether they could read or write. I'm talking about their spiritual literacy. I'm talking about how available I am to what God is saying to me in this moment. Am I willing, Kate, to remove all the distractions and to hear what God is saying as opposed to the people behind me or the voices on my shoulder or in my head? Amen, somebody. And so Jesus, I mean, this would not happen in the Presbyterian church to empower somebody to move in pure spirits. I mean, you gotta be go to a seminary, you gotta do, you, know, you have all these things to do. And, you know, and these are, you know, pardon me, don't kick me out now, don't, don't kick me out. I'm just, I'm just telling you <laughs> the truth. You know, my mother, Jim, would always say, even a dumb man can look wise if he keeps his mouth shut. Amen. But Jesus is saying to those who have gathered in his name, I really don't care about your status. I don't care about how, how many uh, letters are behind your name. I don't care whether you've been convicted of a crime. I don't care how dysfunctional you are, but I want you to know that your mission is simple. I don't want you to take anything for your journey, except a stick. Now, there are some questions theologically about what is the purpose of a stick? Well, sometimes to be frank with you, this is what I, this is what I surmise. 
Sometimes what we say to people, Bobby, they want to fight. <laughs> Sometimes when we just show up, they want to fight. So a stick for people who are not shepherds is really a weapon. And when you know, when you are encountering people in places that you've never been, it says, take nothing for your journey except a stick, no bread. Don't bring your a bag or luggage. Don't take any money. My goodness, how many of us can do that? No money, no bag, no bread. I mean, fully depend on what God provides to the people that we meet. Imagine that. Wear sandals, but don't take anything extra. And this is the instruction. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. In other words, you don't get to really pick and choose how people are going to respond to you. This is what pastors need to learn. You don't get to choose how people are going to respond to you. Somebody, some, somebody that calls you bland to a church is not necessarily calling you to hear you. Sometimes it's just simply filling the spot. But this is, this is the most important thing. If any, any place will not welcome you or listen to you, I'll say that again. If any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet. Now, I told you at the beginning of this sermon to shake the dust off your feet. And I think this is probably the most critical part of being a follower of God. First of all, I became a follower. You became a follower, I hope. Let me talk about me. I became a follower because there's something about not what I learned in a book about the Lord, but rather my experiences in life that changed my relationship to God. And when I have a relationship with God, you know, I follow, I keep it simple. And one of the things that you and I have as a problem, Kate, is keeping things simple. Because I'm always want to, I always want to complicate the message. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I really don't know why. But I always want to complicate things. And it's a very simple thing. Jesus' is basic instruction for all of us is to keep it simple. When you go, somewhere, be hospitable. Bring the Spirit of God with you. It's not about you. And if the Spirit of God is not accepted, don't worry about it. You know, I, you know, when people don't like to hear what I have to say, Jim, I get all tight in the head and the heart. You know, shaking the dust from my, what are you talking about, Lord? He just said something negative about me. What on earth are you talking? Are you asking me to take this insult? Listen, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt. I don't believe that. Words hurt. I wish I had a witness somebody. Words can hurt and hurt deeper than any bullet or knife because you cannot see the depth of the wound. But Jesus says, Use hospitality, the hospitality that you found in your relationship with God. And that's enough. No bread, no bag, no money. That's enough. You listen. You are enough. Say to yourself, I am enough. My goodness. That's just, you know, nothing extra. I'm enough. If you can't accept what God has given me as peace, I can't be twisted by your negative thoughts about me.
I can't tell you how many sleepless nights I've had, Ken Mitchell, because of what people thought about me or said that they thought about me. And sometimes it takes years for them to change their opinion because their opinion was based on somebody else's word, not a relationship with me. And, you know, Freud wasn't around, Maslow was not around. Those are psych psychologists and psychiatrists, by the way, for those who don't know. Jesus said, if they don't accept you, don't get tight. Don't lose a night's sleep like your pastor does. Shake the dust from your feet as a testimony against him. Listen, it's really not about you, it's about them. Calvary Church grows in my humble opinion, because we realize that the church are those who are here now. It's not the building. All the building is wonderful, but it's the people who make the difference. Amen. It's not about black or white, male or female, gay or straight. It's about hospitality. Go, be present with what God has presented you with without your opinion, Bobby. I, God doesn't need my opinion. God doesn't consult with me about what I think. It's important to bring Heather who I am to the situation, not what the past has said about me. I see some strange things happening to th these days. I look at somebody like Jeffrey Tubin. Who would have thought? <laughs> I don't want to go into it. The bottom line is this. Amen, somebody. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Listen, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, but check this out. No matter what we thought about him, God has grace for him. Shake the dust off your feet. God has grace for you. Shake the dust off your feet. God is waiting for you to move and to empower you like he empowered those disciples. Shake the dust off your feet. Know that you have a voice and that your voice, if the voice is of hospitality, you can change. We're not asking you to change the world. We're asking you to change the situation that you walk into. We're not asking you to, you know, bring volumes of people to Calvary. We're just asking you to speak the word of truth about your relationship with God and let it be moved by your actions rather than your words. There are a whole bunch of people who preach the word, but very few people do the word. Let the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable. And that is enough. I am enough. Amen. God send you, send you out in spite of your empty hands without changing the situation in your life. Why? Because God provides. Amen. 
Amen, amen, amen. Well, it's that time that I never thought that I would miss, but I miss it desperately, uh, Bobby, the passing of the peace. I want you to unmute your mics and let us pass peace with one another. The peace of the Christ be with, be with you. Also, also with you. With you. So with you. God bless you all on this uh, 4th of July, <laughs> uh, Patriotic Day. Uh, I see that uh, John Clark has, has on his Hawaiian patriotic shirt, <laughs> but it's blue and white. That's close enough. And uh, good to see you, Joe and uh, Bobby and, and everybody and even Cynthia. Isn't, isn't that something? Lord have mercy. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, let me see. Now, I want you to, if you will, um, this is our prayer time. If you have a prayer concern, um, I'd like for you to voice your prayer concern. And if you have your prayer concern, once you've voiced it, please mute your mic so that we'll not have so much reverberation and uh, background noises. Are there any prayer concerns today? We're pleased to have our granddaughter, Jenna, and her husband, Patrick, with us worshiping today, visiting with us. Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Prayers for all those in Miami um, struggling with the building collapse and uh, impending storm and prayers for all those suffering with terminal illness. I just feel like there's a few 40 something women that I know that are uh, in hospice care and it's uh, sad. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Anybody else? Amen. Prayers of Thanksgiving to the Downing Park Urban Farm who is going to provide us tomorrow. I forgot to put this in the announcements um, with beautiful, fresh, free produce to share with our community. So I'm sorry, again, I forgot to announce it, but please come to Calvary tomorrow between four and six and uh, we'll have the Calvary farm stand set up. And if you can help volunteer, um, we would love it. Bobby helped last time and it was awesome. Thank you, Sister Kate. Travel Sister Kate. mercies for our, um, our friend who had a, a blowout um, borrowing our trailer uh also oh, my no. aunt and cousin um traveling back to illinois um prayers of uh of support for my cousin who um <clears throat> has a seven month uh baby girl who's just um, beautiful but she's a single mom and um and i think struggling with uh, a little bit of depression not planning to be where she is but um you know, trying to be thankful for the joy that's in front of her. Um, prayers also for our friend John Sam <clears throat> Evans, who continues to to um, recuperate, and prayers for our friend Mike Taylor in Newburgh, who continues to to struggle. Thank you, brother. Someone else. Prayers for your daughter who had surgery, Joe jo Brielle. I hope she's doing well. Thank you, thank you. Prayers for the whole Lewis family and that God will provide what is needed. Thank you. Cynthia, you're muted. You're muted. Yes, you are. Can you hear me now? Everybody can hear you now. <laughs> okay. I'd like to thank everyone for their prayers for our daughter. It was a very uh, complex surgery. Um, it took a very long time, uh, but thank God she is recuperating well. And for, when we get together, I would like to share how God showed his hand from the time that we got to the hospital all the way through. It was um, a time that really allowed me to see how God works. So thank you all for your prayers. She is doing well. Good. Good. Other prayer concerns?
other prayer concerns? So I got a text message this morning from a member who I, I will not uh, name the member, but uh, this member has a particular medical condition right now, but has no medical insurance. And this person is afraid. Keep them in our prayers. We also are mindful of all the people who we see and we think that they are a perfection in life. We might even be looking at each other right now and not know that we are fractured souls seeking healing. We've been hurting for all of our lives. And as the songwriter just shared with us, God provides. It's not about God's provision, it's about my accepting of what God has provided. Amen, somebody. Let us pray. A merciful and eternal God. You've heard the prayers of your people. You've heard the concerns lifted up. You've heard of the celebrations of your work, the work of your hands in our midst. For all these things, Lord, we're grateful. We are, we are mindful. of the basic instructions that you've given us who would be your disciples. Bring the hospitality that we have experienced in your presence wherever we go, whether it is accepted or not. If not, don't get bogged down by people's feelings. Shake the dust from our feet. And likewise, Lord, yes, I am prone to worry. Yes, I am prone to fear. But as I close my eyes, enable us to know, Lord, that in spite of my feeling, our feelings, you are always there. Grant us this peace. Help us to proclaim this authority in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning, Calvary. Jim Ferguson here at our time of offering. Part two of the Calvary Extended Family. Come to think of it, a story about how God provides. Last Sunday, I shared with you a letter sent to Calvary in response to Reverend Lewis's letter and Helen's personal note. Today, I will share with you a phone call Helen received for the same reasons. 28 years ago, a mom and dad and her two-year-old daughter lived less than a block from Calvary on Grand Street and were members of Calvary. The dad worked at the number one World Trade Center tower in New York City. One day he was having difficulty trying to decide if he should go to the garage in the basement of the tower to go out for lunch, as was his custom on that particular day of the week. He decided to lunch at the cafeteria instead. If he had taken his car, he would have been a victim of the 
first bombing of the tower as his car was completely demolished. He had extended conversations with our then pastor as to why he made that decision. About the same time, the mom and her two-year-old daughter were visiting Helling in her office. As we looked out the window, we could see a squirrel climbing a tree by the window. The mom said to her daughter, look, there goes Mr. Squirrel. Six months later, mom was lost to cancer. Several years later, the dad remarried and the family moved to New York City. And that's the last time we communicated. On this past Tuesday, the dad called Helen and said that he could just not send a donation, but that he wanted Helen and Reverend Lewis to know how important the Calvary family was to him during his time of life's challenges and how comforting it was to know that he was not alone. All made possible by our offering then and still made possible by our offering today. Now, let us consider our offering at Joseph Bush Reforms. Let us break bread together. Now let us consider ourselves standing for the doxology and prayer of dedication. Please join me.
please join me with the prayer of dedication. You have given us the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, your son, our savior. In gratitude, we return to you a portion of what you have given us to serve you here and around this world. Amen. The blood that Jesus shed for me. God sacrifice. God sacrifice will never lose its power for those who believe. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. According to the Gospel of Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has given, he, which he has prepared. The Lord be with you. Lift your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right Lord, to give our thanks and praise and praise. Holy Lord, Father Almighty. We lift our hearts in joyful praise for you alone are holy. Holy, 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 holy. God of power, God of power, power and majesty, majesty. And heaven and earth, earth are full, full of your glory. glory. Oh, God. oh God, most high. Won't you bow your heads with me? Lord, we don't even know how to pray except you teach us. Give us, Lord, instruction around our own sense of your hospitality. Help us during this feast to shake not only the dust from our feet, but those things that we carry in the bags of our memory that hinder us from being fully present as you have been present with us. As we break bread and as we are reminded in the Gospel of Luke, as we break bread, open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds in order that through thee, we can become servants of all. We are mindful of the words of our Lord and Savior who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, this day our daily bread, bread. and forgive us our, us our debts as we forgive, as we forgive our, our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, glory. forever. forever. Oh, Amen. Amen. Bread broken. 
for you and for me. Let us eat together. Amen. The blood that will never lose its power, symbolic in the cup. As you remember your baptism, remember your relationship with the Lord, be mindful of the sacrifice. Drink ye all of it. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the prayer after communion. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Now Thank We All Our God. Amen. I want to share something before we close. Um, uh, last night, I guess when I got up to go to the bathroom, I have no idea. But I, I, I was awakened to these words. Was it for crimes that I have done he crawled upon the tree? Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond decree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Shake the dust from your feet. And now the, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit rest from the Bible with us and those whom we love and even those who do not receive the message of hospitality, both now and forevermore, let every heart say, Amen.
Bravo, 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 Joseph Henry Bush. Glad to have everybody here. Bobby, how you doing? I am well, Rev. How are you? I'm doing very well. Good to see your face. It's good to be here. <laughs> 